so after many months of waiting to find a Ryzen 9 5900X in stock for anywhere near the retail price, I finally managed to get my hands on one and decided to compare it against my Ryzen 9 3900X machine and see if the boost in performance really is all that special. I mostly play my games at 1440p resolution at 144Hz, so I wanted to test that resolution particularly and see if the boost in performance really is there, and also I added my videos in DaVinci Resolve and compressed the final files in Handbrake, so I also wanted to test those two softwares and see how it performs in comparison to my previous CPU. Because we all know at this point that the 5900X is a big leap in performance for AMD, but I wondered if for my use case it would be as dramatic as it was looking. So my question was simple, is the performance uplift enough to justify me having to upgrade my motherboard and my CPU, since currently my X370 ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero no longer supports Ryzen 5000 series, it's a great motherboard but there's no more support for it, or am I better off just sitting this generation out and waiting until AMD launches the AM5 socket that should be coming out until somewhere the end of 2023, I'm upgrading then, and right after the benchmarks I'll explain to you not only why I decided to upgrade, but also why I think Ryzen 5000 is probably the best time to upgrade your CPU until somewhere around second generation on the AM5 socket. The testing system is my main PC with an RTX 3090 and 32GB of G-Skill Trident Z memory that are clocked at their limit in both platforms. With the 3900X they are clocked at 3666MHz CL16 with the Infinity Fabric set to 1833MHz and on the 5900X they are set to 3800MHz CL16 with the Fabric set to 1900MHz. We start with the gaming results and we'll talk productivity at the end and if you're a diehard Valorant player that either have a 360Hz monitor or just wants to make sure you're getting the absolute lowest input delay possible, this upgrade is massive. The 3900X had an FPS average of 226.8 with a minimum FPS of 162.7 and a max of 333.9 and the 1% lows were at 153 and the 0.1% were at 87.6. The 5900X on the other hand had an FPS average of 409.4 with minimum FPS of 300 4.8 and a max of 620.2. The 1% lows were 246.7 and the 0.1% were 168.5. So as you can see there's a massive FPS boost and in other games that are heavily CPU bound like CSGO for example you can expect similar numbers to these. In practice this more than 80% FPS increase was not really noticeable when playing at 144 Hz but I can easily see it being noticeable at 240 hertz and above. On Warzone I saw an increase of around 43% in the average frame rates, but more importantly the minimum FPS increased from 96.4 to 150.8, making it so that at 144Hz you always manage to clear the monitor's refresh rate, even in the most demanding scenarios. Apex Legends is my bread and butter, and a game that I've played on every single generation of Ryzen and with an in-game FPS lock set to 190 to ensure maximum smoothness, the average frames per second barely change between the CPUs, and both of them are more than capable of keeping the game locked at almost all times. Just a 5900X hedges it out in consistency and delivers an almost perfect 190 frames per second lock at all times. Now onto the more GPU bound games, and here to be honest I didn't expect much of a change, but I was pleasantly surprised. In Red Dead Redemption, with all the settings turned up to the max except for MSAA, the 3900X had an average of 86.5 with minimum FPS of 33.7 and max FPS of 128.6, whilst the 5900X had an average of 98, minimums of 35.5 and maximums of 181.7. This almost 14% increase was definitely noticeable since we're still well under the monitor's refresh rate. Same deal with Cyberpunk 2077, with max graphics and ray tracing enabled with DLSS set to quality mode, the average FPS increased on the 5900X by almost 12 frames per second, but more importantly, the lows now clear 60 FPS at all times even when it comes to the 1% lows. In conclusion, when it comes to gaming performance, the raw CPU power and the lower latency design of the Ryzen 5900X results in substantially higher performance in more eSport type games and the upgrade to PCI Express 4.0 
With support for resizable bar, improves the performance a step further in more GPU dependent games, even at 1440p. If you game at 4K, you can expect this difference to be smaller, and if you game at 1080p, you can expect it to be substantially greater. Now on to productivity, and starting with Handbrake, I usually record my main talking head at 4K 422 10 bit in ProRes HQ, that usually results in great color and detail, but also massive file sizes. So I edit my videos and after I upload, I go back and compress everything to H.265 with a CRF of 17 and using the medium profile to make sure I get great compression and also keep great quality. The original file here is 42 minutes and 42 seconds seconds long and the 3900X took 1 hour and 23 minutes and 59 seconds to encode at an average of 12.3 frames per second and the 5900X managed to shave an almost 18 minutes of that with a time of 1 hour 6 minutes and 4 seconds and an average frame rate of 15.6. Take that improvement and spread it across multiple videos and multiple clips in every video and all that time quickly adds up. Even in the Vinci Resolve that I wasn't really expecting to see an improvement Improvement, I saw a pretty substantial one. I used the NVENC encoder of the 3090 to do the final export for YouTube, so I wasn't really expecting much of an improvement here, but it went from 6 minutes and 49 seconds with the 3900X to 5 minutes and 7 seconds on the 5900X. That's a 33% improvement and something I was clearly not expecting. And after all those numbers, if you're on the fence about upgrading like I was, I think I have some words of wisdom. Flashback to when Ryzen originally launched. I picked up a Crosshair 6 Hero that was X370. It was one of the best motherboards that you can buy because I thought, well, they promised upgrades for many, many years. So I'm just going to keep this motherboard for every single one of the cycles. And if I want to replace my CPU, I'll replace my CPU, keep the motherboard until the end. And when they change sockets, I'll change motherboard and everything will be great. Well, in truth, first gen Ryzen was a first gen product for them and there was a lot of things that they improved with motherboards and that's why you see most of the B450 and X470 motherboards still kicking around with Ryzen 5000 and BIOS updates to keep them relevant, but you see X370 motherboards only receiving unofficially just weird versions of BIOSes that are not officially supported and AMD doesn't even encourage that type of usage. So if you bought an X370 motherboard back then and tried to keep it along until the end, you're screwed. But if you waited a generation, you then got a B450 or an X470 motherboard and you could have easily kept it going until the end with PCI Express 4.0 instead of PCI Express 3.0 and you can keep it until AM5 socket arrives. But why am I talking about first gen Ryzen? Well, if you're planning on waiting until the AM5 socket, you probably are looking to buy first gen Ryzen of the new socket. So it means new first gen motherboard, new first gen Ryzen and new first gen DDR. R5 and all these three things are going to be much more expensive because it's a first generation product and they're going to be buggier and more prone to have issues and they're probably not going to be supported until the end of the generation when it comes to the motherboards and the DDR5 is probably not going to be as fast as you're expecting because every single time DDR memory was upgraded either being from DDR2 to DDR3 or 3 to 4 the new memory type is never as fast as the previous generation's top of the line kits. So if you buy new DDR5 memory, not only is it going to be very expensive because it's all new and it's going to be expensive, you later will find out that if Ryzen next gen is as dependent on memory as current gen, it's probably going to be wise to upgrade that memory anyways, so you're just better off waiting it out and upgrading later. So what's my advice? My advice is Ryzen 5000 is probably the peak you're going to be seeing when it comes to performance boosts this generation. And it's going to be a great rest stop if you plan on waiting until the second generation of Ryzen on the next platform. Memory will be cheaper and most of the large bugs will be ironed out and the second generation of motherboards probably are going to support, I don't know, PCI Express 5.0, something weird like that. And you're just smart and you wait out all the bugs and you don't overcommit in the beginning or you're just uh i don't know like a tech head and love debugging like i was with um ryzen first gen but um i don't know most people uh probably should not spend their money that way so yeah oh oh 
that you hear but it's nothing to do with Ryzen 5000 series or the 5900X or this entire upgrade thingy. You're just here for some feline action and I will shortly share it with you. Thanks for watching, thanks for 5000 subscribers and to much more to come in the future and um, yeah, bye!